Hi, and welcome to Show and Tell. Oh, can you hear me? Ah, we can be heard. We were worried about the sound. Sometimes sound is an issue, but it's not today because we're on top of it. Jenna is awesome. All right, so today on Show and Tell, I have been looking forward to this ever since I bothered her to do this. We are talking vampires with the incomparable, incandescent, so marvelous and so wonderful, Lynette R. Freeman. Lynette, tell the people who you are. Hey, I am Lynette R. Freeman. I'm an actress and dancer and teaching artist and voiceover artist and full spectrum birth doula and lover of vampires. Lynette does all the things, all the things. Um, Ah. Um, so today, like I said, we're going to be talking about vampires with Lynette. Um, mostly I said, hey, Lynette, because we talk almost every day. I said, hey, Lynette, um, what, are you, what are you interested in? What, would you like to come on show and tell? And Lynette said, vampires. Lynette did not think. She did not stop to think. The word flew out of her mouth. So tell me, Lynette, what about vampires? calls to you mm. their sensuality i mean you can't like see vampires without thinking about sex <laughs> like an automatic like oh you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'll do that because that really just calls them to be like right here right here so <laughs> but, and i mean there's just like something amazing about um having just eternal life. And sometimes like the hard part of that, that really intense part of that, that actually like then you're really um, extending just the trials of life, but on in a different way. Um, and that is like, I'm like, oh, my heart, my heart, you know? That, that immort immortality situation. Which yeah, go on, go on. And then, and then you also have like really random things that you can do, like superhuman strength and like, you know, it depends on the vampire, but um, for the most part, you know, you're a night owl. <laughs> yeah. um, but like in some, in some folklore and in some worlds, you can walk, be a, like a day walker, but you just, you just live forever. I mean, you, you can, some can fly, some have like telekinesis, definitely still superhuman strength. I have a question, Lynette. I have seen, you call me after midnight, so clearly night owl. Um, I've, I've seen your diet, which you know, you claim vegan, but I've never actually seen you, you know, eat anything. Um, I'm, you know, your age is pretty much unsure. Lynette, mm -hmm. be honest. Are you a vampire? I mean, I think right now it may be rude to just mm -hmm. out me like that. I'm, not out, I'm just asking. But I, I, just know. But, but I will say, I won't... Um, I won't refute it, nor shall I uh, uh, confirm that these allegations are true nor false. But if I pop up on at your window, just be sure to let me in. I never let you in, Lynette. You know that. It's COVID. It's pandemic. I never let anybody in. Like, this got to be a hard time for to be a vampire. If I were, said vampire, chances are I have been exposed to I don't know how much but I am, I'm, I'm cool, I'm chill. It's just like, it enters my system and it's just like, ah, I don't know, I don't know. And then, you know, so basically, you know. <laughs> well, okay, so we have like so many, oh, that's really nice. You have beautiful skin and obvious vampire, right though? Thank you, thank you. <laughs> she claims it's veganism. Anywho, I'm not saying it might be blood, but whatever. All right, so we have a t like so many pictures about what has what 
what speaks to you in terms of vampirism. So what introduced us to the first thing, the first thing that really tipped this off for you? Sesame Street, the count. <laughs> what? Um, count, so, uh, he like, first off, he was like a full, he was a full muppet, mm -hmm. as it were, you know? So you saw his feet, he had feet and everything. And see, he has all like the feet and he like wore designer stuff. And also he always knew the answer. One, two, three, ah, <laughs> uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Like the laugh, he was charming. He had a, he had, he had backup dancers, the bats. Oh, yeah. Like, do yourself a favor and go online and look up the Batty Bat Dance, a whole song that's lovely. He tells you all about his home. He tells you all about what he likes to do. And then the bats are like full on Broadway. Batty, 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 pretty one. I mean, there's like, that got me. <laughs> as a young person and I was like Casper who <laughs> you know it's just like of all there was there was there was no other supernatural anyone who could compare to the count and then on top of that I would go to my friends houses because my mom wouldn't necessarily let me eat these but if I go to my friend's house before school they often had it um, Count Chocula. <laughs> thing. And I'm like, well, I mean, <laughs> chocolate. <laughs> Count was like, ah. <laughs> so he was right on that box. So there's Count Chocula and Count Dracula. Now, we, I have to say, Count Chocula, the whole thing about staying up all the time, yes, you will you will be like a vampire because you're hopped up on sugar. <laughs> so that's, that's like what they were trying to get to. But basically children could not sleep because there was so much sugar in their system. Yes, <laughs> yes. And because the thing about it is it used to be cocoa in yeah. a bowl. And then later they added some marshmallows and then you had to vote if you see, vote for, for the count. Ooh, there yeah. were a whole bunch of ghouls, but the count was like, <laughs> the count has big genital energy <laughs> <laughs> we're on switch and i was told that i could curse so we can say he got big dick energy so i think I, I don't know if that's true or not people told me i couldn't so i just went with it so yes count chocolate takes that sh eyeshadow all the way to the brow it's a look Yes. It is truly a look. And then little did we know that years later we would be doing the same thing. I mean, trendsetter, clearly. So I vaguely remember Count Duckula. Vaguely. I know there was a whole show, but I think I was really stuck on DuckTales. And I knew I believe that it was like around the same time. So Count Count Duckula was fine, but DuckTales was on. Yeah. Like DuckTales was like light, say, right? But I've always been into like the darker stuff. So, but I mean, also Count Duckula was kind of light because he was just, he couldn't get his countness down. And he always, he <laughs> and things like that. And you're like, oh, Count. <laughs> he didn't quite get his life together or his <laughs> afterlife, I guess. So that's like, all right. So we've gone through, we've gone through all the sweet things, the counts. Oh, we went through the counts. One count, two count, three count. Oh, 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 that was terrible. And I'm not ashamed. All right. Where do we go next? Where do we go next? We now go, if my memory serves, we go now to the hunger. All right. So. Is it, the, is the hunger next? Oh, it's a British show. So do with that one. So. Okay, it's not The Hunger, it's Vampire. Oh, so, oh yes, sorry. Vampire the Masquerade. So Vampire the Masquerade, <sighs> yes. 
So when I was in, um, in middle school, I was introduced to this. This was a role-playing game. So like imagine D&D except with vampires. Oh. Oh. Yes. So Vampire the Masquerade, it's just like you, you like there were, you know, people who were siring other people and then what clans you were in. And the clans became really, really important because the different clans had different sort of powers. And also there was a whole hierarchy depending on who you were playing with in terms of like who was the ruler and it's like, yeah, they were houses. Yes, yes, yes. They were and so I will tell you what they were. And then we're going to go on to the next thing. So <laughs> they were clans, vampire clans. The first one was the Nosferatu, who looked a lot like Nosferatu. You would know them because they had the heads and the ears and didn't quite look, you know, if you saw them on the street, you'd be like, ah! <laughs> That's the Nosferatu. They were like the original, but they really loved books. They were also like the most fierce, like, cause they lived underground and just, just didn't have any type of like really human interaction. So take that as you will. Um, then there's like the Ventru who were like the, the ones in like politics and stuff like that. And they could kind of pass themselves off as human. I think I forget, I forget, I may be telling a lie right now, but let me just tell that lie. I think that the Ventru, I want to say the Ventru were the only ones who could be daywalkers. If okay. memory, I don't know if maybe, you know, folks be making up stuff, making up their own rules, but I feel like that's, yeah. So that was the venture, the gangrel. The gangrel were kind of like the ones who would start a bar fight, you know? Okay. It would be kind of like your grungy musicians and, uh, you know. So like how many houses? Are there like four houses? No, it is oh. five. Okay. Then you have the Torador, who are the artsy ones. Mm -hmm. Or the artsy, very like, ooh, we're patrons of the arts and we love, we hung out with Van Gogh and maybe we might have drained him too. You know, Toreadors, they like music, they like all these different things, right? Okay. And then there's the Bruja. The Bruja are all into that mysticism kind of thing but they also have a certain fierceness to themselves. The thing about it is nary do the plans really mix. So oh. imagine, like, imagine like the godfather kind of thing. Okay. It's just like everybody stays to themselves, but there's a truce and then there's a vampire council and then they all sit down and they're like, all right, what do we do about these humans? I mean, we really don't really need to worry too much about the humans because we got the police in our pocket. We got everybody in our pocket. We have minions and all of these things. So we can just do this our- This sounds very in-depth. Like it takes days to get through kind of in-depth. Look. Okay. It was real. So then, then, <clears throat> mm -hmm. someone named Aaron Spelling created the show. Are you skipping ahead? Kindred the Embrace. But wait, we are you skipping ahead? Yes and no, because it was this. Okay, okay, okay. It oh, was, it was this, and then, okay. This oh. became a show. So, okay. When he stole the idea, because let's be honest about what happened. When he stole the idea, how long did this show, like, like how long did this show keep going? So it was two seasons. Okay. And unfortunately, the main guy who played Julian Luna, who was the head of the Ventru clan and also the mayor of the city, died. Oh. And then also, I want to say this was on, I forget what, what network it was on. I want to say it was on Fox. 
and, and Fox had a long um, history of cutting shows like yeah, yeah. like <laughs> right in the middle of when it starts to get good. But yeah. There was awesomeness. There was like a whole R and J thing between um, the guy who played Shannon Rowe, who was from the Gangrel clan and the girl from the Bruja clan. And they were trying to be together and people were like, fuck you, no. I just want to say that in the chat, Ashley is like, we should definitely play this game. So I'm down. Um, I will block off like about a month of my life because it feels like that's about how long this game is going to take. But that's fine. That's fine. I'm good. With, I'm good with that. All right. So we are now you're in middle school. You're in middle school. You're playing daily the um, playing daily this game. Where did you go from there? We go to, I believe we go to the, do we go to the hunger? I believe you go to the hunger. I think we go to the hunger, so. Now, I'm just looking at the cover to the hunger um, and it does not look like a middle school movie. And I'm not saying that just because uh, David Bowie's on the cover. But it does not look like the thing that you see after you walk out of sixth grade and go sit down and go watch The Hunger. So it wasn't a middle school movie. <clears throat> At the time, I had a thing for David Bowie because I was like obsessed with Labyrinth as well. Because you were human? Is that what you're saying? Because you were human? Okay, great. Okay. And then also, um, <clears throat> I did go to an all girls school. And so, you know, there were, you know, inklings of little things going on. And so then I got introduced to The Hunger. They're like, David Bowie. You like David Bowie? And then also I was simultaneously introduced to Rocky Horror Picture Show. And they were like, Susan Sarandon? You like, mm -hmm. you like David Bowie? You like vampires? <laughs> you like people who are from France because Catherine Deneuve? I feel like you, there was like a person standing on the corner just specifically looking for you. Who was just like, you like David Bowie and some vampires? <laughs> and then you just followed them into a dark corner. Kind of, yes. And it's then not judgment. It was just, you know, just a note. The hunger. And I was like, I was really about it. I was like, wait, 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 wait. David Bowie? Mm -hmm. As a vampire? Need I say more? On but brand. it wasn't about David Bowie. It was about actually Catherine Deneuve. Oh. And Susan Sarandon. Oh. And there were definitely some you know, lesbian undertones. Mm. Cause like she, I think, cause I mean, spoiler alert, he like, he's a vampire, but he gets some vampire thing. Something goes wrong and he ages. <laughs> oh. He's like, oh, my love for such a long time. Yeah, 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 die. <laughs> <laughs> I know you want to, you know, get with this, come into my world, <laughs> my forever boo. So just so I'm clear, when I said, hey, you want to watch something together, you said Bridgerton, but you didn't say this. I did not say this because, I mean, as wonderful as it is. my lifetime and be okay 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 all right it's i i don't i don't love it in the same way i love labyrinth and rocky horror I and got the other you know one of the other a couple of the other movies coming up okay just because wow. there's some things that yes the climax of the movie is wild um just because there's things we there are other things we want to cover that maybe you don't have pictures what happens next in, in my life? <laughs> in your, in my tell me about your life. <laughs> so what happens next mm -hmm. is an, a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thing. I discover a book called Interview with the Vampire that changed my vampiric life. <laughs> when I say it changed my vampiric life, Lord, like I was like, this is a, 
this is a whole this is a whole life lived. We're talking about like real like I was invested in these these vampires who were like thousands of years old. Not thousands, a couple hundred, you know. Yeah. At the time. Um, Armand, this is me geeking out, having to correct myself. Armand was about 400 years old. His person who <laughs> was a little bit older. Um, and, but Lestat, who was my boo, who was actually a Scorpio. Lestat was born on November 7th. Um, I'm a Libra, but I respect the Scorps because my I'm mom. Um, yeah, he was born. He was like about 250, someone can correct me, years old. The thing about it is Interview with the Vampire is coming from Louis' perspective. Right. All right. And so then you hear about all these different characters. Interview with the Vampire, let's talk about the book first. It was the first of 12 books. Yes. Written by Anne Rice. And um, it was written in 1976, in fact. Was it? It was written in 19 motherfucking 76. And Paramount bought the rights to that shit before it was even published. Oh, I did not know that. Get that shit, Anne Rice. Did I tell you my Anne Rice story? My Anne Rice story? Did I tell you that? It's not really a story. Cause you know, I'm from New Orleans. You know yeah. that one. Yeah. So my high school boyfriend went to school with Anne Rice's son. And so, yes, with Christopher. Um, I just aged myself, but whatever. So uh, there's the lighting is good. Anyway, he he went to a party at the house and the only thing he could talk about when he got back was like, they have two backyards. They have two backyards. I never knew what that meant or why that was a thing, but that's all he could ever talk about was that they had two backyards. Nothing about the party. I don't know what else happened in that house. They just that they had, two, they might have just stuck him back there and he just looked at two backyards on it. I don't know. So. No, like, so, okay. Around that, like I wanted to become, like, so in middle school, high school, I wanted to become a writer and I, um, wanted to go to Tulane, actually, because she was a professor at Tulane. And every Halloween, she had a big ass Halloween party at her house. Now, all the times that I was supposed to meet Anne Rice, I was supposed to meet Anne Rice when I was in middle school because she had a signing of Memnoch the Devil at the time, mm. at the Barnes and Noble. And Looking back on it, I think it was a I think it was a coup between my parents. I think they were because it was like I couldn't drive and so I had to wait for a ride. And I'm like, oh my God, just would you just take me to, take me there? Please just take me to go see Ann Rice. And my parents were um were busy. And then finally my dad was like, All right, come on. Right? <laughs> the about it is at the time, also my mother, who is from Jamaica. Um, who, you know, like, let's set the landscape of like duppies and like believes in all the things. Um, she was afraid that I would become a vampire <laughs> because I was going through my goth phase. I was getting great grades and was very like chipper and whatnot, but I was always wearing black. And then I was listening to this like strange goth music that was like, oh God, oh God. Like it sounded like that. It sounded like people in caves. And it was just like my mom was, and I would bring home, um, you know, all the Anne Rice novels. And of course, I was already doing the role play stuff. And she was literally legitimately afraid. She was afraid because also um, I did get my things from Hot Topic. Well, and yes, I have to get bang from. And um, yeah, she was afraid. So I think that she talked to my dad because at one point my dad did pull over the car. This was not the same when I was supposed to be eating rice. It was a little bit after. 
he pulled over the car and he, he was not, he wasn't a, a religious man at all. Um, but he was really on some like, so your mother is, your mother is concerned. <laughs> you know, uh, vampires are of the devil, which was really interesting to hear him say that because A, he, he was not a religious person at all. <laughs> Or even like really, yeah, yeah, he just didn't do that. So at like, he was tasked with it. So I think <laughs> there was an intervention when I was supposed to go meet Anne Rice and would have been like, oh my God, I, I really love your stuff. Oh. So I, I never got to meet her. I mean, you know, <laughs> maybe, I don't know. All right. Um, so someone wants to know if they can ask random questions. Yes. Yeah. Sure. sure. Yeah. Um, I guess you can, I certainly can, but the host might not answer. Um, I might answer, but I might also give you the wrong answer. I might. <laughs> so as they, they work out their question, I know the next thing we're going to talk about is actually the movie itself. The, the book movie itself. So. Um, <laughs> Very random question. That's your favorite question. That's a really random question. Um, uh, I many songs by Taylor Swift, um, but there was that one, there was that one about like, uh, like Mary, Mary, Juliet, the thing about Juliet, I don't know. <laughs> bad, bad blood, obviously. <laughs> I don't. That's a good one. That's a good one. All right. Let's, okay, I just want you to know, so I helped out today, I helped out today with the, um, with the pictures, and the sizing of the pictures is probably based on how much I actually care for that actor, and also the name of, like, the name next to it is also, so Tom Cruise, very tight picture, um, you know, has a nice size picture, like, <laughs> <laughs> You're not expecting Antonio in the movie. And then you're like, oh, good God. And <laughs> I'm like, you gotta step that back and forth. <laughs> so, okay. come down. There will be no coming down. We are talking about Antonio Banderas before he started messing with his face. I will not come down. No. <laughs> So, <clears throat> all right, but Tom is Tom is up first. So let's all come. Tom is up first. Okay. So originally there were other people who were supposed to play Lestat. Tom Hanks was approached. Actually, first off, John Travolta was 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 actually um, invited, okay. but then um, by the time it was time to make the film, he had aged out. Mm. And then, so Tom Cruise and Rice was like, fuck, no, he's going to make it into Tom, into Top Gun with Fangs. <laughs> Very against it. But also up for the role were Tom Hanks. He turned it down for Forrest Gump. Johnny mm -hmm. Depp, Jeremy Irons, Daniel Day-Lewis, John Malkovich, and also Brad Pitt were up for the roles of Lestat. Okay. Tom got it. Tom was a great with that. Re like fast forward, Anne Rice had to like literally write him an apology letter. Cause he- Did she have to though? Did she really have to? <laughs> she didn't have to, but like she had been es essentially being like, this is gonna be shit. This is gonna be shit to anybody who- <laughs> 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 But he nailed that shit. He totally did. He did. Um, he still got the small picture treatment. Just I'm just saying, he did. Still did, but like I, I was like, ooh, okay. Um, she did show her ass publicly, um, and good on her for apologizing because I don't back down. Yeah. So continue on. Um, <laughs> so I, didn't, next. I didn't take take a picture of Christian Slater, but originally the interviewer was supposed to be River Phoenix. He died before, you know, um, mm -hmm. or anything like that. So then, so then Christian Slater took his 
And this is how much apparently he made for the film, 250 grand. He took his 250 grand and he donated it to two charities that River Phoenix was hmm. loved. Hmm. Um, yes. I no start for that. So, um, Brad Pitt played Louis and actually he didn't want to. After he got the part, he was just like, mm, how much would it be if I, if I peace out? And they were like, actually, it would really fuck up the film. Like, would you just stay? And he's like, oh, fine. And so he did. <laughs> um, and then uh, Kirsten Dunst. Are you skipping Antonio? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not skipping Antonio. I'm not skipping Antonio. Okay. The thing is with Antonio, Antonio was originally actually supposed to have a scene with, with um, Tom Cruise. Mm. Because there is one time in which um, Lestat and Armand meet and they don't like each other, which is of course evidenced in the film. Right. Um, mm, mm, mm. I love me some Antonio. Pretty, I did. I'm not I just don't, I, I'm not going to get into it. I'm not going to get into it because it's going to be a whole thing and I put my soap boxes away tonight. So we're not going to get into it. We're going to keep moving. We're going to keep moving. <laughs> okay, your, your mouth is, okay. Hey, I saw this movie 26 times. So I can, I can quote it. You know, <laughs> it's the story of my life. Okay, good, good. Um, And so, yeah, like, but like he, he comes in very late in the film. Um, and so he really, with the theater, the vampire. Yes. And that, I, that they have a vampire theater and some unsuspecting humans. It's, it's kind of terrible, but everybody there is like, oh, oh. Um, well, then we have baby Christian. Um, 20 times, yes, it is a lot of time. <laughs> I'm telling you, y'all, I watched it every week. <laughs> you know what? I watch Shit's Creek all the time. I'm not going to get on you about this. Like, I literally watch it all the time. So I will not get on you about this. Like, some people, some people quote, coming to America, I can quote. <laughs> Is that Velvet? <laughs> about it is also, you know, like, I knew, like, way too much trivia also about it. So Kirsten Dunst, Kirsten Dunst, this was her first film. What the heck? And um, it was her first movie. She wasn't allowed to watch the film after she wrapped it. She wasn't allowed to watch the film actually for a long time <laughs> by her parents because they were <laughs> going to be too scary and it's just too much. It was very graphic. So graphic in fact, there was so much blood and whatnot, which I really enjoyed. But there was so much blood and whatnot. Actually, Oprah walked out in the first 10 minutes and she hated it. And she thought about, she had an interview with Tom Cruise. This was not the big jumping on the okay. Different one. She had an interview with Tom Cruise. She thought about canning it, but then she didn't. But like, she hated the film. So wait, she didn't, but she didn't finish it. So how does she know she hated it? It's Oprah. She. Oh, yeah, true. Okay. <laughs> like, 10 minutes, I hate it. <laughs> We're done. If you don't get a car and you don't get a car, I'm out. It's the open. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so uh, good. 26 yeah. times. Kirsten Dunn's first film. It was her first on screen kiss with Brad freaking Pitt. She yes, said, it, it, it's a little, it's, it is, it is kind of, uh, kind of gross because he was 18 years her senior. She did say it was gross and that he had coots. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, have you seen Brad Pitt lately? He probably does have coots. <laughs> so, just saying. And fun fact, so um, Brad Pitt is like what, 6'1", and Tom mm -hmm. Cruise is like what, 5'7"? So, um, <laughs> All of the things were with the significant lifts in Tom's shoes, or he was standing on one of those apple boxes, or Brad was standing in a ditch to make <laughs> the same heights. Or the 
and no one will ever know. <laughs> oh, oh, first time is indeed Project Sophia. All right, let's, what happens next? Where do we go next? Oh, so where we go next, where we mm -hmm. go next. So where do you go after you kiss Brad Pitt at seven? I don't know. I mean, I feel like everyone else would fail with comparison. <laughs> like, what the heck? <laughs> You're I, nice, but I've had Brad Pitt. I don't know. So. <laughs> go on. What's next? Next. Next we have, ooh, that's a good question. Next, I think we have. We could just ask them. Yeah. Huh? Blade. Oh, like the first greatest 10 minutes of a movie, like you just start. So this past Halloween, I watched it again and this shit did not disappoint. <laughs> it's just like, oh, it's like, from the beginning, it just like starts and they're like in that car and then the questionable woman and the qu the really like spaced out dude who was clearly on something. She's like, yeah, baby, I'm gonna take you to some really great place. <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't look like it's going to end well for him. And like, I noticed things that I didn't notice before, you know, years later. And then the blood vaccine, it's crazy. It's crazy, it's a rave. And then you see all these like, weird crazy shots of like wow that person moved really fast and then you're like uh oh this is this i don't think that's gonna be very good and then all of a sudden you know that like the legion song comes on it's like ding, 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 ding. <laughs> all of a sudden the the sprinklers come on and it's blood and you're like oh and the guy's like oh my god and then he looks around and there's all vampires he's like and then Blade comes the fuck in. <laughs> he comes in just like, you know, and you're like, ah, oh, shit. You know? <laughs> and he's half vampire, you find out he's a vampire, you know, he's day walker, he's hanging in some shit. Oh, it was great. So also around this time, mm. I'm also into a lot of romance novels and looking at Anne Rice novels and things like that and imagining myself as a, you know, who would I be in this thing? God, I wouldn't have been nothing but a slave. This oh. is problematic. I'm like, where are the black vampires? Where are they at? Where are they at? There have been some in the past, but I didn't know about them. Blackula, sure. Yeah. Vampire in Brooklyn, Eddie Murphy. I'm like, mm, wait until you turn Angela Bassett. Hey. <laughs> so, um, but this was like the first like serious hardcore, even though he's like a superhero, it was like the first one where you're like, oh shit, what? And he's kicking ass. And there was like a little little black girl in there. Who was who was a vampire? Oh. Kicked, in, kicked his ass, which was amazing. He was great. And Sanaa Lathan. Sanaa so, Lathan. so while while Jenna sh uh, changes the picture, someone asked that Snipes has been getting work lately, hasn't he? He has, and that is actually going to come up at the end. Oh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Look at Sana. <laughs> So but I will also say, so Blade was Blade 1, 2, and 3. Blade is coming out again mm -hmm. with, guess who? Mahershala Ali playing Blade. And that's when you know you're serious. That's when you know you're serious. You don't pull him out unless you're serious. You're serious. <laughs> so... What about, like, obviously, you know, the fact that Blade is so serious, what about Sana, like, calls to you? What about, what about Sana calls yeah. to you? Yeah. Well, I love how she all of a sudden just, like, just, become, just takes her own power. She's mm -hmm. just like, yeah, you're my son. You're my son. 
but I'm out here freaking it and having a good time. Like every single time you see her, she's like climbing out of a bed or she's just like, I got a pair of heels on and my hair is still baby. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, so that whole time that Blade was, was, was growing up and shit like that, you was just freaking, okay. You know, she's, she's, she's not having all these things like on we like just, just she was just living her life. <laughs> which like, honestly, if you were if you are immortal and if you're an immortal woman, then how necessary is it to be worried about somebody else's thoughts about you? Laze le bon temps brûlé. I see that you're in the Mardi Gras spirit. I appreciate it. All right. <laughs> Where do we go from here? Let us move from here we go to remind me. Jenna, where are we going next? Buffet! Oh. <laughs> so Joss Whedon um had made a uh, had had created a wonderful movie that like was a cult hit, but didn't do too well at the box office, if memory serves. And it was just very kind of like, you know, light. Then he was like, what if we darken this up a little bit, make it a little bit more gritty, but still humorous. Why don't we, I don't know, turning it into a series. And Buffy the Vampire Slayer was born. This was a fave of mine. I loved it. It was in my um, WB. Uh, <laughs> like, like, I didn't want people to at all interrupt me on my WB binge because I believe it was Buffy, then Dawson's Creek, right? The Crick. Dawson's Crick. <laughs> the Crick. Down at the Crick. <laughs> Dawson down at the Crick. <laughs> And then what it wasn't it Felicity or was it Felicity Buffy Dawson's Creek? Something like that. So I was really, really into it. It was great. It was great. Like the Hellmouth. And they would bring up some real shit. Some real shit. And then sometimes not real shit. And then it was always very witty. Um oh, like Willow. Amazing, amazing episodes. Like when like Willow. Like Will um Willow and um, what was her girlfriend's name? Willow and and, and Willow and Tara, um, and you also had the whole thing with Buffy's mom. Yeah. Sad, but that was also really brilliantly done because it was an epi episode with no music, so it was quiet mm -hmm. at, at at points, and um, of course they hush. And there was also. Um, uh, like of course, like Spike shows up on the scene, and yeah, yeah, and oh yeah, the body that was that was that was a really good one. Like and and I think also just generally like it dealt with really interesting kind of tropes like addiction and mm. you know the whole thing with Willow um, going like deeper deeper into into her witchery, but her individual dog witchery. Yeah. So our next picture, I know what the next picture is. Um, it is Spike versus Angel, um, which we talked about and you were dead set it had to be here. Tell me, why does this picture have to be here? Are we gonna talk about Xander? Do we need to talk about Xander? Even though, even though Angel, Angel totally got the spinoff. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do the problematic thing, Spike. <laughs> yes, Spike fan. Even though he's problematic in so many different ways, I just so many ways. I'm just like, you know, who the fuck doesn't love a bad boy? And I mean, I guess Angel when he becomes Angelus becomes the bad boy, and he's like, Ugh. but I also. Between us, just between us, just between us. I'm just saying. Don't tell anybody. 
Yes. Well, yes, he is. He's not even slightly. He is a better actor. There's no, there's no slightly here. Like, the man, like David Brands is a love. He seems like a lovely man. He seems like a family man. He was, you know, interesting on Bones, whatever. But you know, pretty good for you. Um, yeah. I think the only problem I had, um, I had in uh, with Spike versus Angel is. She's a vampire slayer. Are these really her only options? True. True. I mean, she did have Riley, but you know. <laughs> you know we don't talk about him. I mean, like, look. I mean, like, look. I mean, yeah, Spike. Like, I think that with Spike, it's just like, okay, there's some things with you when you're a vampire slayer. At least, you know, boo, I gotta go slay some demons and shit. Look, I am kind of a demon, so I get you. Baby, be safe. I got your back. I mean, you can't exactly, you know, share that. I mean, I mean, it's the same way as being like a performer, though. You're just like, oh, I'm gonna be out. You know, I got, I got, uh, I got tech. I'm not getting home till after midnight. You understand, right? And this is gonna happen, like you know, like all week. And they're like, yeah, yeah, I get it. I get that part. Actor, you understand? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. But I feel like I can also maybe sit down with the accountant and be like, hey, dude, um, just this week, just like you got tax season, this is what I got. So, and I mean, I think it might be a little harder to explain to be like, yes, hey, dude, I'm going to go out and kill some vampires, um, but it's cool. So I don't know. I still feel like maybe there were some options that maybe we were not exploring. Yeah. All right. Uh, I also think it's well done to have Spike be her back from the dead depression I just want to feel something boyfriend. Yeah, I mean, that's true. That's true. She was back in the day. It's a lot. It was a lot. They needed, to, I mean, it was, it could, it was nuanced. That sex scene foreplay was a whole nuanced thing. It was, this is problematic in a lot of ways. <laughs> but I also like to be choked every once in a while. <laughs> you know what, though? It's good to know these things about yourself. I mean, it wasn't quite a thing. Like, it was interesting. It was interesting because, I mean, I feel like up until then, it was very much like, oh, oh, sex, sex, sex. If you have the, if you have the sex, it'll take away your soul. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so, Alex like, is saying Angel, Angel uh, Buffy is just Twilight minds the Mormon stuff. True. This is <laughs> This is the truth. Because I mean, also, let's be real. It was on the WB and then it was on the what was what, what w? Um, Oh no no no. Um W? No. Was it CW? I don't know. I don't remember. I'm old. All right. In education, the first Buffy Spike sex scene taught me things about myself. And now these are things that Candace can take with her throughout her life. Okay, so what happens next? Where are we next? Because I want to make sure that we cover definitely the last thing, because that's the only reason I said yes to this. <laughs> All right, we're going to go, go quickly through the next, like, the next kind of like. What's next? What's next? Jenna, what's next? Oh, yes. Okay. Wait, before... We got to talk about that. We got to talk about Bianca Lawson. Yes. Ooh, I don't know if everybody knows, but she is Beyonce's cousin. <laughs> And she on crack and she is still playing 17 year olds as, as, as an almost 50 year old. Um, she played Kendra. Mm. I saw myself in her because I was like, look, even though your Jamaican is not that great, <laughs> I love this Jamaican, so <laughs> I appreciated the nod. And also I was like, I appreciate that there is some pepper in the salt. So it's, there's like a little speck. It just it dropped when you were moving that pepper. This the pepper over the salt. It fell in, and there it is. So. Second before she got replaced. <laughs> oh, apparently, she's on Teen Wolf playing the same character. Look, <laughs> this is why you moisturize. This is why moisturizing and water are so important. So important. So important. Do y'all realize she is almost 
there's nothing wrong with being almost 50. There isn't. But I'm like, look, she's still killing that game. She will ride that shit all the way to the bank. Look, residuals, you need those residuals so you can get your, get your health insurance. I'm not mad at her. So I'm not mad at her at all. <laughs> Look, I mean, that's, there's something to that. I mean, like, separate from the vampires, as an actor, the fact that you you are actually in, because, I mean, like, I will, I will not forget, you know, I, I, I will not be cast as a teenager anymore, nor a kid. I'm someone's mom. I've, I've seen you in some wigs. I'm not going to say no to that. Oh, she's only 41. She's only 41 and she looks like she's 19. I thought she was a little older than that. Uh, Alex, Alex is the type to look things up. I feel very confident on that one. So, <laughs> um, so I'm just saying. What's next? Ooh, Vampire Huntress. You have to tell me about this. So, yes. In trying to look for myself in this world, mm. <laughs> I became obsessed. I came across the Vampire Huntress Legend series. It is a series of books that I feel like could, could and would be turned into a freaking awesome TV show. Um, it is about like a Buffy character. She's black, she has locks, and hmm. also in her like sort of like ripening stage in a way in terms of like being able to, you know, understand these like different like energies that like she can see certain things and get certain like hangs when a, when a vampire or a demon is near. And um, her team around her is a team of BIPOC folks from different traditions. Uh oh. So, and you have like older characters. There's um, um, a, one of the guys on her team is like, is a Native American um, and he's like an older guy. And then there's this like this, this older black lady who does things with the moon and it's just great. And, and the vampires and the demons are also folks of color. Oh. So then when they get together, it's, just, it's a whole thing. It is a whole saga. It is wonderful. Okay. Um, L.A. Banks passed away. Mm. Um, black woman uh, writer. And um, she's, it, it's bomb. It's bomb. It's kind of addictive. You're like, what the fuck happens? They go all the way to hell. What's, what's happening? What's happening there? You know, and she's like, yeah, it's unapologetically Color. So, um, Candace wants to know what's the first one called. The first one is called Minion. Yeah, okay. yeah. Minion. Yeah. Vampire I, Hunter yeah. series by L.A. Banks. Yeah, by L.A. Banks. Okay. All right, we're we're gonna get in. We got seven minutes, and if I don't hear that, if I don't hear it. I will cut. You, you will never hear the end of this. All right. So, what can come next? I'm using your government name. I'll use your government name always. Keep going. So. <laughs> all right. All right. So uh, these next two are, are like basically the same. The Vampire Diaries. I like, you know, I got into them. I did. And I also <laughs> admired like how graphic they were and like all the great sex. And, you know, always there's like one kind of movie. There's one like darker person. Yeah. You, you yeah. It's just very trite but at the same time i enjoy it i i, I enjoy the fuck out of it. um mm -hmm. and then moving into the originals which is a spinoff mm -hmm. at the original vampires who you see in the vampire diaries they were like the villains they came on as the villains as like the big bad they're like oh mm -hmm. there's, there's three of them and they're really terrible but then they end up being really great and then you're rooting for them in the originals um, and yeah. And also, um, uh, the guy who plays Klaus, side note, um, is married to, uh, oh shit. 
the woman who was on Girlfriends, who played the flighty one. Oh, um, Portia. And, um, no, not Persia, Persia. Persia. Yeah, Persia White. Yeah. Yes, Persia White, who apparently is like still singing and whatever else, like with her beautiful, like beautiful tats or whatever, being gorgeous. On Instagram, they are adorable in their quarantine-ness with their dog. She's so beautiful. She's so beautiful. All right. We still have two more to go. With two more to go, we've got True Blood. True Blood! I want to do bad things to you. So True Blood was a thing for me in grad school. So I read all the Charlene Harris oh, I skipped. I skipped. Oh. We skipped Willem Dafoe. Oh, shoot! Okay, I do. Okay, so this, <laughs> you, you have to watch this. It's called The Shadow of a Vampire. It's great. Because it like, you're you're dealing with Willi- Willem Dafoe being Willem Dafoe, like fucking chewing the scenery. And actually, you know what we actually forgot? What? We actually forgot um, Bram Stoker's Dracula. We um, did. Oh. Bram Stoker's Dracula was a huge one also for me, which I absolutely loved. Freaking uh, uh, Keanu Reeves with his terrible, terrible British oh. accent. Um, followed by Winona Ryder with her terrible business. Mm-hmm. But then Sir Anthony Hopkins and, and, and. Say it. Say it. Uh, Gary? Gary Oldman. Ooh. Gary yeah. Oldman. I was like, ooh. <laughs> Gary, those little glasses. With those little glasses in the top hat. And I was just like, oh my God. Mm, who knew? Who knew? Mm-mm-mm. I know. Oh, I have- I have trivia. If we can get through the whole thing, I'll give you one bit of uh, of, Dra- of uh, Dracula trivia of my own. Okay. So, but, okay, True Blood, because we're going to get through this. We got three minutes. We're going to do it. True Blood was um, Charlene Harris's novels, and then they were turned into a TV show, which was, like, really, really, you know, fun and graphic because it was on HBO. Uh, They deviated from the books, and I think that's when things kind of went off the rails a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, But it was lots of fun. Um, They are Sookie Stackhouse novels, and... um, they have a, a couple of like nods to Anne Rice. Okay. And now, right. this and is the only reason you are here. The only reason you are allowed to be on here. The only reason. <sighs> Nadja, Nandor, <laughs> Laszlo, and Guillermo, and Colin Ros- Robinson. Colin Robinson. <laughs> Coach Robinson. Colin so many Colin Robinson. <laughs> what we do in the motherfucking shadows. You know, and I there, there are two things that you brought up. The vampire the, um the the vampire theater. Um the, the comes up, yes, which comes up and the oh my god, the vampire council. It which is where Wesley Snipes is. The vampire council made me holler. Oh my god. Because they also nod to the fact that, like, they're like, yeah, Brad Pitt and Tom Cruise made it. <laughs> <laughs> I, love that, I love that Wesley Snipes calls in on Zoom. On Zoom? <laughs> oh, he's wrong. And he's just like, wait. wait can you hear it? What just happened? It's, <laughs> it's gross. Like, oh, and uh, uh, what's his name? Oh, gosh. Mm-hmm. From Dusk Till Dawn. Hmm? From Dusk Till Dawn. Oh. Uh, Oh, oh he's, a, he's an iconic. Y'all know him. Y'all know him. Not, not Terrence, you know. No. No, 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 no. Uh, 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 oh, he was in every single one of freaking uh, um, Rodriguez's films and also in. George Clooney. <laughs> okay. George Clooney. I don't think they got George Clooney money. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Yes, James Fair. Yes. James Fair was also on in the Vampire Council, which I yes. really appreciated because <laughs> to from dusk till dawn. I would I could spend all day talking about what we do in the shadows. Um so good. Just Matt Berry saying bat. Oh, 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 oh. oh so joyful. Um and, and, oh. And when they 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 kill uh, 
Drac like the Dracula character is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. They go I was out. watching that one the other day. <laughs> You'd all be well started by watching the ABC scene from Vampire's Kiss on YouTube. Ooh. So write that down. Um, Vampire's Kiss. I'll give you my li my little bit. I think I told you this. So, did you ever see Va um, Dracula two thousand? Yes, Dracula two thousand. I did. So I still get six cents residuals from the scene that I did in that thing. <laughs> I <laughs> met Gerard Butler. He's <laughs> I need to go back and watch it. I put the I'll, I'll send you the little clip because I look very different in um we won't get to how old I was then, but it's don't <laughs> Oh my god, there is a shirt. There is a shirt that says um it says like Nandor, Laszlo, Nadja, but not you, Guillermo. And I want that shirt so badly. I want that shirt so badly. All right, it is 9.01, and here's the deal. Um, in an hour, actually in 59 minutes, big time is coming on here. So we're gonna, we're gonna clean up and do all the things like I'm supposed to. Um, big time is at 10 o'clock right here. So, you know, maybe shut down your computer, go get something to drink and come right back. You know, get something to eat because they've got Substantia Jones tonight and the Adiposity, uh, Adipositivity Project which is gonna be amazing. Then tomorrow night, my lovely, wonderful producer, Jenna and Armad Vashti will be doing In It to Venet at 5 p.m. also here. They are covering Fast and the Furious. They are covering the entire oeuvre of Van Diesel. But tomorrow is the piece de resistance, Fast and the Furious. Um, then at nine tomorrow is the, the, the new, oh, I guess like premiere episode of Politism with Cheyenne and Emily, I believe is a, a rewatching of the second season of, uh, of Bonding. So 9 p.m. Um, I won't get into too many details because you should definitely watch it because it's going to be awesome. Um, Lynette, where can the people find you? You can find me at Lynette R. Freeman at L-Y-N-N-E-T-P-E-R-F-R-E-E-M-A-N. <laughs> on IG, you can find me at that same name, Lynette space R dot Freeman on Facebook. Or you can find me at Lynette R Freeman VO on the IG. I'm s almost certain that you're in the witness protection program. Um, I You can find me at Karen Trenise, K-A-A-R-O-N-T-R-I-N-I-C-E. Um, on Instagram, I don't do anything on my Twitter. It is just like, if you want to follow something just for something to do, you can do that, but I don't do anything there. And Facebook is a bad neighborhood. Um, you can also follow the show, which I'm going to start putting up our resource list of things that we've covered, uh, show and tell PPC, um, at, that's Instagram. And then, then if you have not done so, you should follow Pop Culture Co-op on all the things. You should follow us here. You should follow us on Twitter. They do stuff on Twitter, I don't. And then you should also follow us on Instagram. And I think we have a Facebook page. We have stuff. You should follow us. Um, we're about to go on out, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. The music that you hear is written by the wonderful musical genius, Avi Amon, who wrote our wonderful theme music. And that is what's gonna take us out. Lynette, say goodbye to the people. Goodbye, people. I want to see you later. <laughs> Good night. See you in two weeks. <laughs>